If we look at our first big question, what's the effect of our civilization, which is a quote from Freud. Mm -hmm. um, from a philosophical perspective, or theological perspective, um, religious people will argue, well, there was a thing called original sin. Um, there was also a more enlightened or writer's perspective which will zoom in human nature. Um, what is it that you would argue concerning us human beings um, that we apparently do not learn the lessons or uh, uh, that we can turn back into the more dark zone mm -hmm. of human life? Well, we do have certain dualities in front of us that will become very important in the next decades. How do we deal with um, identity, identity politics, differences? Unfortunately, in today's world, because there's so much fear, there's so much anxiety, and I'm not belittling anxiety, I'm an anxious person myself, how can I belittle other people's anxieties? But anxiety is something we need to talk about. And when politics is guided by anxiety or fear, that's very dangerous. So one of the primary questions or problems, as I see it, is this illusion that sameness will bring safety. People started thinking that if we are surrounded by similar people, like-minded people, if we have a communities based on sameness, that will bring us safety. That's an illusion. Uh, that's not the case at all. We are far too globalized. So what is happening in one part of the world affects someone in a completely different part of the world. The unhappiness of one individual in Pakistan affects the life of someone in Canada. This is the world we're living in. So we do have to understand that we're all in this together as global souls, as world citizens, and we need to revive that energy of humanism and coexistence. How can we live together with our differences around shared common values? For me, one of those, the main uh, common values, one of them is, is definitely democracy and definitely women's rights because how can you have harmony and peace when half of the world is being pushed back into the private space? I see this everywhere in the Middle East, in Turkey as well, but all around the Middle East particularly. More and more women are being reminded of their roles as mothers, caretakers, more and more women are being pushed from the public space into the private space, into their homes, and there's a huge imbalance, you know. All the mystics throughout the centuries have talked about the importance of balance. We have to balance energies. At the moment, I think the balance between masculine energy and feminine energy is completely broken in many parts of the world. That too is a problem for me. But isn't also a part of this is that, I mean, uh, I'm very glad you bring up uh, uh, the mystics. Um, they are unknown in our day's world. Uh, uh, and the people who speak most likely are um, intellectuals um, who are confusing people's mind concerning uh, sameness, uh, the revival of nationalism. Here in London you have Mr. Uh, Boris Johnson, we can make a whole list of uh, highly educated intellectuals who um, are liars. It's the phenomenon of the betrayal of the intellectuals. Um, how to deal with that? Where is that responsibility of intellectuals come in our society uh, when they are not accepting their responsibility, uh, worse, uh, when they are deceiving people? I think we need to differentiate two things. We can criticize the intelligentsia, the literati, and that's fair enough. But at the same time have a lot of respect for the intellect and try to cultivate that. And this is what I see lacking. We don't have enough intellectual platforms where we see people from completely different backgrounds, different cultural, ethnic backgrounds, but also different disciplines come together, listen to each other. We have been far too compartmentalized and I see that as a problem because we have things to learn from each other and I think the world right now needs more interdisciplinary dialogues, you know. So um, I do have a lot of respect for the intellect 
and for the role of the intellectual, which is one of the interesting dilemmas for me because in the UK the word intellectual doesn't have very positive connotations, as you know. But I think it's important to comment on, on what's happening in the world. It means that we care about it and we need critical minds. Societies can only move forward through critical minds. However, we should also bear in mind that there's an amazing bulk of literature about neuroscience, the brain. We have defined the intellect in only one particular way. That also needs to change. There are different kinds of intellect. There's emotional intelligence as well, which we need to put into the picture. And you can only cultivate that through stories, storytelling, empathy, you know, the ability to put yourself in the shoes of another person. That also needs to be in these platforms, in these intellectual platforms. So intellectual doesn't necessarily mean, you know, one particular way of looking at things through logic and, and reason. It can be done in very different ways. Intuition is also very important. I think we have a lot to learn from ancient philosophy. We have a lot to learn from each other. Our reading lists need to be eclectic. We need to read from the East and the West, you know, from people who are different than us. And only that diversity is going to hopefully uh, give us a new boost and a new energy to move forward.